Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the SR2 PDW. We're going to be mastering the weapon, which means getting 500 kills with it. And we're also going to talk about why the latest patch has basically elevated the status of this PDW and made it a very, very effective gun. Now, one of the biggest weapon changes that came around in the last patch has actually changed every gun in the game, just about every gun in the game, that did 25 damage maximum and it made it 24 damage maximum, meaning that you could no longer kill somebody with four shots with the 25 damage max gun it was going to take five shots assuming you aren't getting headshots so this actually changed the time to kill pretty drastically on a lot of weapons in the game and the sr2 just like a lot of other guns got a damage reduction however the sr2 initially did 26 damage per shot it got reduced to 25 damage per shot meaning it can still four shot kill somebody in cqb the only downside is that this four shot kill range extends to 10 meters or closer so that is the only place that you're really going to be seeing any sort of benefits with this weapon. In fact, when you start to engage people at longer ranges all the way out to 55 meters, this gun is only going to be doing 12.1 damage per shot, which means you're going to need quite a few rounds to take down your target. That being said, it didn't take too long to get 500 kills with this weapon. And there we go, get the fifth service star for this gun, awarding me the mastery dog tag for the SR2. As long as you play the appropriate maps, which means close quarter engagements, you should be doing all right with the SR2 and you should be getting a lot of kills in those extremely close quarter situations. The one thing you gotta watch out for is the reload speed on this gun. It has a painfully long 2.6 second reload and if you go through the whole mag, it is a whopping 3.5 seconds. So that is not gonna do you any favors in close quarter combat. You're really just gonna wanna switch to pistol to clean up any remaining targets. You'll have a better chance of getting a pistol kill and reloading this gun before the enemy kills you. Now the recoil on this weapon certainly isn't going to do you any favors either. One more reason to use it in close quarters where recoil isn't going to be as big of a factor because you can just kind of spray and pray but at longer ranges, you're gonna really wanna try and tame that recoil in one way. I actually ended up using the compensator to try and deal with the side-to-side -side recoil, which is incredibly high at 0.45 pull left and 0.45 pull right. It has hands down the highest side-to-side -side recoil of any PDW in the game. Combining that with an incredibly high rate of fire at 900, this gun is gonna be terrible for trying to hit targets at further ranges. So the compensator is one of the best choices for trying to tame this gun, even if it is is only just a little. Now the underbarrel attachment for this weapon has already been chosen for you, a built-in vertical foregrip, so the gun is gonna be a little bit easier to use while on the move and essentially designed for hip firing. You can actually equip a laser sight on here and get some pretty decent hip fire accuracy. And if you really do prefer hip firing your opponents, then I would recommend doing that. I'm not using it in pretty much most of the clips here just because I am trying a little bit more medium range with this weapon. And when I get up close enough, I find that the hip fire accuracy is good enough already so that I can drop my targets pretty darn fast. Now, because this gun is just not gonna be effective at longer ranges, it's very hard to use it in any sort of game mode that involves longer range combat so vehicle maps are pretty much out of the question if you're going to play a vehicle map with the engineer class then use a carbine you're going to need something that has decent range on it this is pretty much a tdm or domination only weapon you're not going to really want to take it out of these game modes otherwise you're going to have a real hard time doing all right what i recommend though since the engineer isn't exactly known for its awesome infantry combat is picking a map that has a lot of destruction in it something that you can really take advantage of your rocket launcher blowing holes through the map, creating your own paths, or killing people behind walls. And don't forget, using something like the small will allow you to actually snipe people from extreme long ranges, and that can be a fun way to sort of sniper duel in this game. You kind of fire a rocket at a corner you think somebody's going to peek around, and you'd be surprised how many times you can actually get a direct kill. Here is a good example. We have a team full of guys that know there's somebody's behind this wall, and I'm the only one with a rocket launcher that can actually do something about it. So you will find a lot of situations in TDM and Domination, simply because not very many people actually play the Engineer. Now looking back at my own footage after playing, I realized that I should have switched over to the suppressor much sooner than I actually did. I do have a bit of suppressed gameplay a little bit later in this video, but I should have been using it much more than I am currently. The muzzle velocity on this gun by default is only 310 meters per second. That is just stupidly slow, making it unbelievably ineffective at longer range and trying to hit moving targets. It's just 
really, really hard to use this weapon. So put the suppressor on there. It's not going to affect your FPS that much. And it's going to allow you to get in extremely close up against your opponents and drop them without them knowing that you're around. And you'll have to excuse that FPS. I do mean meters per second. I'm used to saying FPS from Airsoft, which is calculated in feet per second. Now a trick for doing well with this weapon is to find the right path through the map. This is extremely close range. Even medium range this gun is going to lose a lot of its effectiveness. So you want to only move in areas where you can engage people in extreme close quarters where you're going to have the advantage. When you don't have that advantage then switch to the rocket, take a shot, blow them up or move on to a different part of the map and just try and keep it purely close quarters. You don't have the freedom like you would with an assault rifle to try and go around and explore bigger, more open areas of the map. You really are relegated to the CQB aspects of each map. Unfortunately, not all maps have a lot of ways to move around them in just pure close quarters, so you do have to pick your maps again intelligently. Playing on Dawnbreaker, I recommend trying to stick in closer to the middle side of the map. You will see I'm kind of shifting over to the outside a little bit, but it's usually just to try and push up and get a good flank off on players in the center part of the map. The upstairs, the closed in building areas is where I'm trying to get through and that's why I'm sort of taking a slightly different path just because, especially with the player counts, it's not always the smartest to run headlong into the action. Now as much as I like playing just crazy aggressive and that is a playstyle that I get from assault rifles with crazy fast reloads, it's just not quite possible to do that with this weapon. You have to play aggressive and then retreat. You have to aggress then retreat a little bit so that you can get that reload off. If you just go balls out aggressive, try and switch to your pistol, maybe get a kill, then you're going to be faced with some really long reload times and if anybody else comes up then you're going to be kind of screwed. So you can't be quite as aggressive with this gun as you can with others in terms of getting multiple kills but for getting that single kill in close quarters there's few guns that can match the power of this one. Without question the SR2 is the highest damage per second PDW in the game provided that you're engaging in close quarters. When comparing it to assault rifles the only assault rifle that out damages this one in terms of DPS is the Bulldog and that one has some interesting accuracy and recoil as well. It is a bit more effective at longer range though. So my common bit of advice when using any weapon in this game, and in this case the SR2, is play the gun to its strengths. What does the SR2 do well? Extreme damage in close quarters. All right, try and get close up to your enemy. Don't try and engage too much at medium range unless you don't have any other choice. It also has a very low muzzle velocity, so slapping a suppressor on there really isn't going to hurt the performance too much, and it's going to keep you off that mini map, which is a huge advantage. Laser sight, as always, is optional depending on your playstyle. Anyway, if you haven't tried it, the SR2 PDW yet. Give it a try. It is a beast in close quarters. I think you guys will like it. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.